Hi, I'm Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. Today I have a very special show. I have Susan Hayes, and she's now the, um, the artist that's currently in the gallery at the uh, Carson Valley Arts Council. Welcome to Nevada Trails. Oh, thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. I'm looking at your work, and you're, uh, you kind of made me laugh because I was calling that one painting out there Ringo, and it was not it was your ex-husband. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that's a faux pas. Yeah, he kind of looks like a Japanese Ringo. Yeah. But he has the, the long coat, and you, look, you just look like a Ringo picture. So, But uh, you're pretty cool about it. You said, well, it's okay for anyone to have pictures in their mind of what they think something looks like. Yeah, and I, I think it's that's one of the enjoyment of going and seeing an art show in a gallery or even in a museum is that you can think your own thoughts about the artwork that you're looking at. Not always. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was I was at uh, a museum in London and uh, stopped and have a lunch and I happened to be sitting next to the person that buys the paintings, and she asked me what I thought about this particular piece and I thought it looked like a ping pong table. She got very mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it spent like a couple hundred thousand to buy it, and I said it was a ping pong table. I, so, went, I once had a friend that said that um, uh, Picasso's famous work. Some of his famous work look like cartoons, and it's true. Mm -hmm. They have a cartoonish, um, you know, feel about them. And so what we think about art is is part of the fun of looking at it. Well, I get a kick out of it because that same uh, uh, museum in London also was the day when they had the third graders. So if she would have asked about any of those third graders, she would have really been mad because they had a <laughs> lot of different opinions. I was li listening to them, and kids just say the darndest things. It's just crazy. And, you know, children's art is where you can get great hints for uh, doing artwork of your own because they have a lot more freedom and they don't have the preconceived notions of what good art is. Exactly. And so some of their colors are fantastic, you know, the way they put them together because they're happy accidents, but they're, they're great hints for what you can do with your own art. Well, they really tell the truth. Yeah, they do. It was kind of funny. I, for some reason, my grandfather kept all my art from when I, when I was like a kid. I mean, really young kid. We're talking, you know, the mud pie stuff. And it was like, whoa, I must have been mad at my parents. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I thought, whoa. Yeah. I was very, very honest. Well, I was looking at your bio. You're, you went to, uh, you, you grew up in Kansas? Yes, I grew up in Kansas. Um, I went to Marymount College to get my art degree. And um, I really... Uh, enjoyed growing up in Kansas. It was an agricultural area, a lot of natural beauty, and a uh, fun, fun small town to grow up in. Well, it's a nice nice state. Yeah. And then it's, you, did you go to, uh, from Kansas to Japan? Um, I actually went from Kansas to Chicago, and I worked uh, there when I was in graduate school. Oh, that's great. Where yeah. did you go to school at? I went to school at Wheaton for two years. And I worked at uh, publishing companies for two years doing graphic art and uh, do, working in dark rooms, uh, actually doing the uh, printing press, printing plates, actually burning the image on there. Now that technology is all outdated. And then I also did uh, illustrations. Excellent. And photography work for them. Well, I lived in Chicago, and it's a very artistic town. It's oh, yeah. It's a great place to learn. I actually have a childhood friend who's um, a professor there at your college. Oh, I know. Talk about a small town. Yeah, it but, really um, is. And then from there, I went to uh, the University of Kansas and studied in graduate school there. And I was studying um, textile, textile classes, and also working in the design area of the of the library. They have a they had a design need there for people to do, for an artist to do the sign systems because they were redoing their whole library. And so I would do their sign system <clears throat> and they'd put it up and figure it out if people really used that or not or really read those signs. <laughs> and then they had me do a mural in the reading room, which was really a great, uh, great opportunity to do a mural in a major building. Well, and, you have uh, a very good self-discipline out there. And up in the gallery, you have good signage. Good, every painting has a, a story behind it. I like that. Oh, thank you. Um, I really want people to enjoy my work and to kind of know its history. And people like stories. And uh, that's one thing that we can give each other is our stories. So some of my work has sto a story behind it, most of them. But to share your story is really fun. And we all have sh sh uh, stories to share with each other. That's what makes being human enjoyable. Well, it seems like a lot of your paintings are dealing with weddings. 
Um, yes, um, I, uh, I uh, was going through a divorce, and some of the wedding paintings were during that time, and it was like I was putting all my feelings about my own marriage into the pieces of work, but it was a positive feeling. It was like saying goodbye. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, we had that talk with uh, Justin, <clears throat> who's our director right now. He uh, was talking about when you're a writer and you go through a situation and you write those songs, sometimes it's hard to get it out. So it's, it's very... Um, well, it was, it was like a, almost a therapy. Yes. And um, one of, uh, when I got the award for um, uh, Let's Get Married, this one, um, of myself and my ex-husband, um, one, of, one of the artists that saw that, the head of the Art Association, that one got the President's Award at the Tokyo Metro. But anyway, um, he said, I can't believe that you can remember what you felt when you got married on your wedding day because you, you've captured it in the painting. He said, I don't know if I can remember my exact feelings that far back and are able to put it in the painting, you know, that I did maybe 23 years later. So well, I think that's a great attribute, though. Yeah. Because you, you can feel it when you look at it. Yeah, and um, I think um, I really enjoyed doing that painting, even though it was a painful part of my life. That's one reason I started doing my art, was that I needed um, a way to express myself and the feelings I was feeling. And I like to do positive things. And I really like this one with the um, feet over here. The groom's feet and the and the oh. bride's feet. <laughs> yeah. You know, we always see faces. We always see, you know. But this could be anybody, <laughs> you know, because we, you don't have a head on it. But You're like I, my wife. She wanted a picture of the rings when we got married. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's fun. No, it's positive. Yeah, it's, it's really positive. And, and I remarried, and I'm very happy. And I came back from um, Japan two and a half years ago and settled here in the Carson Valley, and I really enjoy this area. It's my first time to live here. Excellent. Well, yeah. how long were you in Japan? I was there 28 years. That's what I was to say. There was yeah. a big uh, period of time in your yeah, life. Yeah, it was half my life. I came, I, I went there at the age of 27 and came, came back at the age of 54, so um, it was exactly half my life. Excellent. Yeah. So you can get mad and swear in Japan. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they use our swear words, but no. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't have else. very many of their own, <laughs> so they borrow ours. But, but uh, I I did learn the language, and I enjoyed being in the art community there, and uh, they were great artists to to work with and well, to show with and. And uh, that I got invited to be at the Tokyo Metro twice a year as an exhibiting artist was like a dream that you just never imagine what happened. Well, are they of the scale like of Chicago? Yeah. Because yeah. you, know, you don't really, if you talk Chicago, that's a big art yeah, gallery. Yeah, right. It's like being at the um, Chicago Art Institute. Yes, that's one of the places I would go frequently. Yeah. Or at the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's the same caliber. And they get some of the same shows. They get some of the same, like, you know, a Van Gogh show that goes around the world or, or a Matisse or a Renoir show. They'll get the same ones that come to the major museums here. But when you win the uh, President's Award, they put yours at the entrance. Right. So and that's got to be the feeling. Oh, it was. It was. And several times that happened to me with my paintings that they would put them at the entrance so they would draw people into that particular show. And it's, yeah. it's a pretty big painting. Oh yeah, it's five by six feet. Um, in, it, actually, the, the paintings for the Tokyo Metro, you had to do big paintings. You couldn't do small ones at that time. Now they've changed where they have miniatures and smaller ones in a certain section. But at that time, you had to do um, a five by six foot painting. And that was an oil? Yeah. yeah. How long did it take to make? About six months. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> and some would take longer if, you know, if they were very complicated. Well, so. when you do something like that, 
uh, and ends up in a, a museum like that, do you, uh, do you end up selling it, or what do you do with something like um, that? You could sell it like to a big institution. Usually a person's home would not be big enough for such a large piece, but you could sell it to a bank or a school or uh, some, some big public building. Excellent. Well, we're down to about a minute and a half, and we're going to go to break and show some of your work. Oh, okay. Do you have some contact information if people want to get get a hold of you and see more of your paintings? Oh yeah, um, I'm on. I'm. A, I have a website. It's SusanHayesArt.com, Artist.com. Excellent. And of course, yeah. you're going to be here through uh, December 9th, I believe. Yes. And actually, my work will be up till the 11th. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Because uh, so we're come down to the Carson Valley Arts Council and uh, and check out our work at the uh, Copeland Arts Building, as it's called, and and we'll uh, see more of your work. I hope that people will come and see see my show. Um, I think um, they would really enjoy it. Well, one thing I like about your show is you have more pieces than some of the artists that have been here before. Yeah, I I uh, really like sharing a lot of my work at at one time. Um, and thanks to my husband, who uh, has declared a lot of my work, I'm able to make more work available to people to, to see and to buy. Well, I've been enjoying looking at it. Oh, thank well, you. Well, we'll be right back and check out, check out our work right now. Thank you very much. Hi, we're back with Susan Hayes, and uh, one thing I, I enjoyed about your work is if you have so many types of art where, one, your your um, your oils, your drawing, you have so many um, styles. What, how many styles do you have? You have, um, what would you say, a broad range of mediums, pastels, colors, pencil, watercolors, oils, collages, assemblages. You went to school a long time. Yes, I did. <laughs> I went to university about eight years altogether, and uh, I, I just love creating it doesn't matter what it's with and 
as long as it makes a line or makes an image, I'll be trying to use it. And uh, I also like ceramics, although I haven't done any since I came back here. Actually, that's my friend who uh, I told you was in Chicago. He's a, in charge of ceramics. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it's a totally different medium than, of course, your flat paintings or or um, drawings, but I like to do hand builds. Do you like visualize what you can do before you do it? I, I usually, um, yes, I do have an, an idea, but sometimes I let the medium tell me what it wants to be. You know, it's like it talks to me. You know, Because this one up here looked like church windows to me. Yes. Uh, and you have so much little, little detail in there, too. Yeah, it was supposed to look like stained glass. Okay. And, and um, it's a Christmas picture, but I did it with sunflowers instead of chrysanthemums and summer colors so that it's not so obvious it's a Christmas theme. Um, you can see there's a nativity here with a rabbit and a cow and a little chicken down there. And then there's the, the nativity with uh, Jesus, Mary, and, and the Christ child. Um, and then there's a rabbit who is, who's an angel there. And then I have crosses and churches. But it's my family there, my daughters there and my son. And um, I actually used some of the things that I had in my china cabinet as inspiration for this piece. And the man with the violin and the woman who's singing um, here, that's actually a clock, but the numbers didn't work with the composition, so I made it an artist's palette instead. Oh, wow. But it's a Christmas theme that you can hang up all year, year long. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, is, that, is your son's name Mike? Uh, my, I have a, a stepson whose name is Mike. Because it's something about a painting you have called uh, Mother and Daughter, and I've never seen the word Mike in there. Uh, um, but it's about the right of color to convey the happiness. Yeah, uh, uh, Mother and Daughter is actually my cousin. Melanie and her daughter Jennifer and um, Melanie was one of my favorite cousins and uh, she was a very special person and she died of um, lung cancer um, in 2009 and uh, so I ended up doing a memorial painting for her and I did four her husband asked her husband Al asked me to do some paintings for her memorial since we were really close and he knew I painted and I said sure I'll do that and then um, through the paintings we found out we had a lot in common and um, I had gone through this divorce and and he had gone through the death of my cousin and and he knew a lot about my family and uh, of course he knew a lot about me from my cousin because we wrote each other a lot and so this love was born. And so um, through these paintings, we got to know each other. And uh, I ended up marrying Al and, wow. and resettling here. Fair. But it was a really uh, wonderful thing that occurred through my art that I would have never imagined that I would have a different life and actually be resettled here through doing some paintings. Um, a, big, a love came into my life well, that I fantastic. wasn't expecting. Yeah, That's a good painting then. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And I uh, ended up doing several paintings of Melanie. And there's several paintings in the exhibit. One is uh, Melanie's Meditation. And that was the primary piece I did for her memorial. Wow. And, uh, well, it's a very beautiful painting. And another one that really caught my eye was the, um, the Exodus. Oh. Because it had um, watercolor, pen, and ink. Yeah. I thought, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Exodus is, of course, the story of the Israelites escaping uh, Egypt and uh, being led out by Moses. And I like to do stories in a cartoon style. And um, so the illustrations are for my cartoons are usually watercolor. There's another one here called oh, okay. The Life of an Angel. And uh, if you get really close, you can see all these every t everyday things that angels are doing. Well, I have a good angel, so <laughs> by checking it out right now. That's good. Another thing, I need some education. I apologize for my lack of uh, art knowledge, but what is a Gigli print? G -I -C? Oh, Gigli. Um, print. A Gigli print is um, 
It's actually done on a, a special printer and um, it's different than um, regular four color offset printing. It's a new technology and offset printing gives you really small dots like your digital but if you get really magnified you can see those small dots where a jacle the ink squirts out and it's from a word called meaning to squirt and the color is 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 more full and uh, my prints are done on um, archival ink and archival paper and the ink is supposed to last a hundred years under regular use and um, so um, that's what's special about uh, these prints is that if I did offset for color it wouldn't have the rich color that it does now and it's so close to the original sometimes you can't tell the difference. Well they're absolutely beautiful and for the amount of time you put on each one is way more than a lot of artists I've seen yeah. before here. And Graphics 8 uh, here in Minden uh, does all my uh, art imaging Mike um, does it down there, and uh, they do a great job. This is great. Of color matching everything so that the prints look almost identical to the original artwork. That's fantastic. Yeah. Tell me about this shipwreck here. I, um, I was involved with the uh, Tosha uh, one my, myself a long time ago, so I'm kind of attracted to uh, shipwrecks for some reason. But that one uh, looks like the San Francisco. Yeah, this one um, was a shipwreck that happened in Japan. Uh, 400 years ago and what happened was um, there was a storm and this uh, Mexican Spanish galley uh, shipwrecked on the coast of Chiba prefecture which is near Tokyo and um, there were over 340 men on the ship and they were rescued 317 were rescued Wow and out of cold and frigid waters and the pearl divers, the women pearl divers uh, actually rescued these men and then um, they had hypothermia and they um, they saved them by giving them their own body heat and they didn't know how to speak Spanish of course so but this whole village um, housed and clothed and fed and nursed these men back to health and took care of them for a whole year. And then the shogun of that time made them a ship to, to go back to, um, to Mexico in. And eventually that ship was made during that year and they could go back home. But it was a really generous, generous thing that those people in uh, in this uh, Onjuku, this town called Onjuku did. And um, this picture was done for the 400th anniversary of this rescue. And um, the ambassador from, uh, from uh, Mexico was there and also Spain or somebody from, from the emb embassy was there. And uh, they have a celebration every year. Wow. And then they have a museum for for Onjuku for this event, and they have things there uh, symbolizing um, this rescue. Well, that's, they that's have big statues painting. there and things. And thank you. This one was done in some of my signature colors. I like working on black surfaces with metallic colors. Well, now that you're in Carson Valley, has any of your style changed? Because what I love was that um, those gold leaves kind of dotting going up through the at the mountains. Yeah. What were the change of seasons? The mountains were dark and black, and then you had this gold trail going up there. It was absolutely stunning. I think that probably eventually the Carson Valley will start influencing my art in some way, maybe natural natural beauty and maybe doing a few more landscapes. Well, from seeing your colors, I think you would make things jump out a lot more. Yeah, I think so. I love working with color, and in Japan I was named the colorist. Do you uh, take any pictures of things to, be, to help you do your paintings? Um, yes, to give me, um, uh, to help me remember things that I've seen that are very beautiful. I'll take a picture of them. Well, yeah. we're down to about a minute and a half. If, um, if I wanted a picture of me and my wife, do you do anything like that? Or do oh, you, yeah, what, I what, sometimes do portraits. So what kind of jobs do people um, ask for you to do? Um, sometimes portraits and family things and also um, 
big paintings for certain. Because you mentioned the murals. Yes, That's awesome. I, I've, I've done murals and I like doing murals. I'd like to do more murals. Have you been to the Carson Valley uh, Museum down there that has a lot of murals in it? Yeah, I think they're great. They are great. I We're think they're great. Down a minute, give out your contact information again. Oh, okay, I'm, um, I'm, you can reach me at SusanHayesArtist.com and um, I'm uh, P.O. Box 373, Genoa, Nevada, 89411. I'd like to hear from anyone who would like to know about my art. And uh, come down to the uh, Copeland Arts Center and see her work. You have a lot of pieces. How many pieces do you have here, by the way? Oh, I think um, several hundred. I was going to say, you have, you made, it's a beautiful uh, gallery you did. Oh, thank you. Well, thank so thank you. you, Susan, for being well, on Nevada Trails. Well, thank you for inviting me. Well, it's, uh, every time we get an artist on, I really have a good time because you all are gifted, and it's just, I'm just in awe of that gift. Oh, thank you. So you're welcome. Come down to the Copeland Arts Center and see Susan Hayes' work. I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you.